The Runaway Balloon. Julian had always been fascinated by the sky. The vast expanse of blue, dotted with fluffy clouds, seemed like a magical canvas to him. On his tenth birthday, his parents surprised him with a giant helium balloon tied to a weighted basket. It was big enough to carry him and a few of his friends. On a breezy Sunday, Julian and his two friends, Clara and Leo, decided to try out the balloon. The field behind Julian's house seemed perfect. With the help of his parents, they managed to secure the balloon and climbed into the basket. The initial experience was breathtaking. They hovered a few feet above the ground, the wind gently rocking the basket. Everything seemed perfect. However, as the wind picked up, the balloon started swaying more violently. Suddenly, one of the ropes securing the balloon snapped. Before anyone could react, the balloon, with the three kids inside, began to ascend rapidly. The houses below became tiny. The trees looked like green specks. And the panic inside the basket was palpable. Clara, always the resourceful one, tried to calm the others. We need to stay calm and think rationally, she advised. Remembering a documentary he had seen, Leo said, if we release some of the sandbags, we might be able to control our altitude and hopefully land. One by one, they cautiously dropped the sandbags. The balloon gradually descended. However, they were now drifting over a dense forest. The thought of landing there was terrifying. They decided to hold on to the last bag, hoping to spot a clearing. As the minutes turned into hours, their hope began to dwindle. Just when things looked bleak, Julian spotted a large lake ahead with people around it. There! We can aim for the water, he exclaimed. They released the final sandbag and steered as best as they could, given the whims of the wind. As they neared the lake, people on the ground noticed the balloon and started gathering. They shouted instructions, and some even waded into the water, ready to help. With a soft splash, the basket hit the water. The kids were wet and scared but unharmed. Kind strangers helped them out, offering towels and comfort. The balloon's unexpected journey had ended safely. As they waited for Julian's parents to arrive, the trio sat wrapped in blankets, sipping on hot cocoa, provided by a friendly camper. They didn't speak much, each lost in their thoughts. It was clear that this adventure would be a story retold many times. Days turned into weeks, and the balloon episode became a popular tale in their town. And while the balloon was never used again, it served as a poignant reminder in Julian's backyard about the unpredictability of adventures and the enduring spirit of friendship. The forgotten treehouse. Far away from the bustling streets and noisy neighborhoods. Nestled deep within a thick forest stood an old oak tree. This tree wasn't just any ordinary tree. It held a secret buried within its massive branches. Obscured. By years of overgrowth and moss, was an intricately crafted treehouse. For Sasha, a young girl with raven black hair and an insatiable curiosity, this forest was her escape. One day, while wandering deeper than she ever had before, she noticed the outline of something wooden high up in the old oak. Intrigued, she began to climb. 
The rough bark scraped her hands, but her excitement powered her upwards. When she finally pulled herself onto the wooden floor of the treehouse, she was met with a scene that seemed straight out of a fairy tale. Dust motes floated in the soft beams of sunlight that penetrated the gaps in the tree canopy. Old books with leather-bound covers lay scattered about. In the middle of the room stood a sturdy wooden table, and atop it, a crystal-clear globe, which, at first glance appeared to be filled with swirling smoke. A plush armchair, albeit a little moth-eaten, beckoned invitingly. Sasha approached the globe, her fingers itching to touch it. As she did, the smoky insides came to life. Images began to form. And soon, she found herself looking at a younger version of her grandmother. Laughing and dancing with a group of children inside this very treehouse. Mesmerized, Sasha watched as the globe showcased memories of days long gone. Children using the treehouse as a secret club, reading adventures by lantern, light, and even a young couple, stealing a moment away from prying eyes. Hours seemed to fly by, and as the sun began to set, the globe's images faded. With a heavy heart, Sasha decided it was time to leave. But she promised herself she would return. Back home, she shared her discovery with her grandmother. Eyes twinkling, her grandmother spoke of the treehouse's history and the joy it brought to many. It was a place of happiness, dreams, and above all, memories. They both decided that such a place shouldn't be forgotten. Over the next few months, Sasha and her friends worked hard to restore the treehouse. They cleaned, repaired, and made it a haven once again. But the globe, with its magical memories, remained the centerpiece. Word spread, and soon, the old became new as generations shared stories and created new memories. And while they celebrated, laughed, and dreamt, the old oak stood tall and proud, its branches cradling the treehouse and its countless tales of yesteryears. The little robot's mission, beyond the borders of the sprawling, city, where towering buildings converged with the horizon. There lay a vast expanse of untouched wilderness. This terrain, with its uneven trails, dense forests, and unpredictable wildlife, was considered inhospitable for humans. But this exact environment was what Tink, a small exploration robot, was designed for. Tink was no ordinary robot. Where others in the city were built for specific tasks, like cleaning or cooking, Tink was programmed to learn, adapt, and explore. It had an insatiable curiosity matched only by its adaptability. Though its frame was compact, Tink possessed an array of tools and sensors designed to help it navigate the great unknown. Today, Tink was embarking on a mission that many considered impossible to find and document a mythical flower known as the luminous orchid, which was believed to glow in the moonlight. Legends claimed it was nestled somewhere deep within the forest, in a location that no human had ever reached. Armed with his maps, sensors, and an inbuilt camera, Tink was confident. The journey was far from simple. Tink faced numerous challenges, from navigating thickets to avoiding wild animals but its programming allowed it to observe and adapt.
when it encountered a fast-flowing river. Tink fashioned a makeshift raft using fallen branches and leaves. When night fell, it used its thermal sensors to track the warmth of small creatures and stay away from potential threats. Days turned into weeks. Tink documented several unknown plant species, encountered curious animals, and often recorded the mesmerizing sounds of the wilderness. Yet, the luminous orchid remained elusive. One evening, just as the sun cast long shadows over the forest floor, Tink stumbled upon a moonlit glade. There, amidst a carpet of soft moss and surrounded by fireflies, stood the luminous orchid. Its petals radiated a soft glow, casting an enchanting light that made the entire clearing seem ethereal. Tink approached cautiously, capturing images from various angles. As dawn approached, the luminous orchid's glow began to fade returning it to the guise of a regular flower. Tink, having completed its mission, decided to stay a while longer, reveling in the serenity of the forest. Weeks later, when Tink finally returned to the city, it brought back not just images of the luminous orchid but tales of its adventures. People were amazed at the stories and the images. But for Tink, the journey itself was the true reward. It had experienced the beauty of exploration, the thrill of discovery, and the joy of learning, making its mission a resounding success in more ways than one. A fairy tale festival in a quaint town nestled between rolling hills and sparkling rivers. The annual festival was the highlight of the year, but this was no ordinary festival. It was a celebration of all the fairy tales that had been passed down through generations. Every year, families would come together to recreate scenes from their favorite stories, transforming the town into a magical wonderland. Streets that were usually bustling with carts and merchants were now filled with knights, dragons, and fairies. Sophie, a young girl with a wild imagination, had always been a keen participant. Each year, she'd eagerly anticipate the event planning her costume and performance with meticulous detail. This time, she had something truly special in mind. As preparations were underway, the townspeople noticed that the forest surrounding the town had started to change. Trees seemed to shimmer with an ethereal glow, and whispers floated through the air. The older folks murmured about how the forest was coming alive, resonating with the festival's spirit. Sophie had decided to depict the story of the Moonlit Maiden, a lesser-known tale about a girl who could control the phases of the moon. As night approached, Sophie took her position at the town's central square. Donning a silvery gown, she danced gracefully her movements mirroring the waxing and waning of the moon. As she danced, something remarkable happened. The moon above seemed to respond to her motions. It pulsed and glowed brighter with every twirl and step she took. The townspeople watched in awe, as the night turned as bright as day. The river reflected the moon's glow. And for a few moments, Everything was bathed in a serene silver light. When the dance ended, the square erupted in applause. 
The festival had seen many performances over the years, but none as enchanting as this. As the night wore on, the town was alive with festivities. There were jesters juggling flaming torches, bards strumming tales of old, and children chasing after mythical creatures crafted from their imaginations. When dawn broke, the townspeople were exhausted but content. The festival had not only been a celebration of stories but had also created a new tale for the town's history. And as for Sophie, her dance with the moon became the stuff of legends. It was a testament to the magic that can be conjured when passion, tradition, and a touch of fairy dust come together.